One of the important pre-delivery activities you'll need to be part of is the walkthrough of your new motorhome. Even if you are an experienced RVer, you'll want to be paying attention to the items discussed during your walkthrough. There are different brands of accessories and different technologies used by those brands, so it's entirely possible that there will be something in your new RV that works differently than in your old one. Of course, if this is your first RV, then everything will be new, at least to some extent. Hopefully, your dealer has a designated walkthrough person, and that person either is or has been part of an RV service department. Your salesperson may have done a good job pointing out features and benefits of your new RV, but how well he or she actually understands your RV system operation is an entirely different matter. Have a couple of pre-researched, fairly technical questions ready to ask, and if the person doing the walkthrough can't answer them, politely ask that a service technician join the walkthrough. Asking whether the water heater has an anode rod or not might be one such question. You may also want to ask whether your walkthrough guide minds if you video record some or the entire walkthrough. My guide was happy to allow it, as I'm sure he knew I'd forget much of what he was saying, and by allowing the recording, he reduced follow-up calls about things he'd covered. With most folks carrying a smartphone, you really don't need to worry about having a fancy video camera. You can get good footage from your phone. Before we jump into some of our video of our walkthrough, anticipate taking more time than a typical new car overview. The walk around for our fairly small motorhome took about two hours. Have your guide demo not just describe how systems work. Make sure you fire up the stove, the water heater, TV menus, and the air conditioner. Have your guide lead you through the steps and processes of your RV systems. Yeah. Okay. Does that have to be put in yet? or? No, no it's portable. It's... Oh. So you won't have to do anything with it actually, to a certain extent. You do have to pull it out and plug it in. It is kind of like a big briefcase. Everything, as far as hooking it up, is inside of the panel. So, this, I believe it's this big plug right here. This is what you will plug into outside. Okay. This end will go on to here to go into your your uh, charge controller. Mm -hmm. Your charge controller will tell you what you're charging at. Or, or onto the extension cord there. Correct. You want to tuck it in so it's tight. Table-wise, your table is up here. So when you put the table in, just drop your leg in the hole. Flip your table over, set it in here, and then you'll tighten the knob to tighten or loosen. Now, when you're making it into a bed, if that ever happens, so the cushion there will fill in. Have a cushion here, so that cushion will go there. The long skinny one up here will make up the rest across here. Now you are going to have to press them because they are all the way back against the backrest, but it will create the bed. You can leave that in if you want in the corner, it's up to you, or you can pull it out. Let's talk a little bit about how the TV works. Um, you know, there's an antenna 
-hmm. And then there's, um, yep. you have to like select the, the input and then do a channel search every mm -hmm. time you turn it on? Exactly. Okay. So when you're on cable, you, you are going to have to move so you don't want to switch. So there's a little actuator on the antenna plug-in over here on the wall. It's a little push button. It's got a little light next to it. That actually sort of boosts the signal, brings it in a little bit clearer. You want to have that on when you're using antenna. If you do part cable or a portable satellite, shut that off because it will interfere. You got that, Jim. Okay. Okay, so yes. the little red light is is for the antenna, Correct. and then and then if it's cable, then it, it doesn't need the amplification. Exactly. Okay. You do have to go on the TV and do go to your input or your settings uh -huh. and do a channel scan every time you go somewhere. Your antenna is not like the old school antennas. I don't know if you've ever heard of them or seen them. We've seen people got it on the road and their antenna's hanging off the side of their motor because they forgot them. This is a stationary antenna. As far as having to lift it, you don't have to do that. You can turn, there's a little button on the side, to spin it to try and point the antenna. Never really had to. It's gonna pick up the same signal mostly at any spot, but it can help at times. If you're under a tree maybe, you might have to move. You could try moving this to see if it picks it up. Adjust accordingly, basically. Usually you don't have to. It's okay. not that big of a deal. Um, but again, you do have to scan, even on cable. You, have, you do have a piezo igniter on here, so you have a sparker. Turn the light, the propane's on. Get a little light. We'll turn that on in a second. Your middle burner does burn hotter than the back. It's your high, excuse me, high output burner. Labeled in red so you can see it. Now, oven. Do you plan on using the oven in here? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I see it as old as the 90s. Uh -huh. So, you might, you may use it. Pizza's always good out of the oven. You do have to light the pilot in this every time you want to use it. The pilot is at the very back, but it is back here. Long matches for big long lighter. Exactly right. So you'll put your lighter up to there, obviously you gotta light it. Turn the knob to pilot. Right now nothing's happening, there's no gas coming out. With your lighter lit up to the pilot, press in, the pilot will light. Keep holding in for a few seconds to get the pilot warm. Obviously get your arm out of there. Then you can turn the temperature. This whole metal tube right here will light, and then you can close the door and let it warm up. So you don't need to press. Okay. This button here is your mode button. This will change the mode on the thermostat. So you have your furnace, which is the very last one. Off is nothing on the screen, and it says off in very, very tiny letters right there at the bottom corner. First setting when you turn it on is fan. So that will turn this on and the fan will blow. It won't kick the compressor on and put cold air out. It'll put whatever surrounding air is out there. Next mode is your cool mode. And for then example, just use the up and down arrows to, to adjust the temperature. temperature. Exactly. Now, if for some reason it gets changed to Celsius, both arrows at the same time will fix that for you. Okay. So they give you a little picture description on what's what on the fridge. Okay. So on and off, on is pressed in, off is out. Okay. This switch pressed in is your auto setting on your fridge. So your auto setting is when you are not plugged in or don't have a generator on, it's gonna choose gas to run. You have to have 12 volts, doing it, it needs 12 volts to activate the board to tell it to light. Okay. You don't have to light it yourself, it's auto light. If you want to force it onto gas and make it run on gas, you'll press the switch out and you'll have no lights. 
but you're still on. As long as this switch is pressed in, you're on. Okay. If you get a check light, which we should right now because I believe the propane is off, it's going to go through three spark cycles on the fridge. After the three spark cycles, the check light will come on. If the check light comes on, obviously go outside, check your propane, make sure you have propane, open it up if it's off, come back in and turn it off for a couple seconds, and then turn it back on and that'll reset it. And it'll try again. I might have to talk out here while you're uh -huh. pointing that in there. So, since you guys are new, shower head has a stopper on our head has a stopper? Correct. It has a stopper on it so that you can stop the water. The reason they do that is because you have a small hot water heater. The hot water heaters in these things are not adjustable temperature wise. So you do want to do it like at home where you'll turn a little bit of the cold, a little bit of the hot and mix it so it's right for you. Your switches right here have lights on them to tell you if they're on. So water pump switch is lit up. Your water pump is on demand. So when you turn this on, it is gonna run until it pressurizes the system and then it'll shut off. Anytime you open a faucet, it's gonna run to keep it pressurized. It'll shut the faucet off. It'll run for a couple seconds to keep it pressurized again and it'll shut off. Gas water heater is right here. Sort of the same situation as the fridge have a DSI fault light which turns on right away when you turn it on. Once it starts its sparking cycle, again like the fridge, three sparking cycles, if it doesn't light, you'll get the light. The propane I believe is off right now because it is full. It'll stay on and it'll stay salt. So I'll tell you it's not lit. Obviously go check your propane, make sure you have it, make sure it's on. Come back in, turn the switch off, turn it back on. It'll reset. Okay. I'll go turn the, before you guys go, I'll turn the propane on to turn everything on. Nothing here. There's no tank heaters on here, so you don't need to worry about this. You only have one slide out, so again, nothing here. Your slide switch for there is right here. I don't see anything next to us through the mirror, so when you go to run it, obviously you're going to run it out. You're going to press and hold the switch. When you go to start it for the first time when it's been sitting, you want to press and hold the prime switch. It's going to send fuel into the carburetor so the generator can start. Now it is an Onan generator so you can press and hold stop and it'll prime it as well. Okay. But they gave you a prime switch. You'll press and hold it until the light turns on. A couple seconds, let off. Okay. See how the fridge just switched over to uh -huh, the gas? I could hear it. Because it's on on. Back to this. Sorry. You do have an hour meter down here as well that displays your hours while the gen is running. It won't display them when it is off. After you've primed when you go to start, press and hold start until the generator completely starts up and starts running. You can let on. See how you still have no power in here? Give it a second should hear a little click and you'll hear the mic the microwave should be usually they do. some don't some do. there you go okay so you hear the little click and your breakers and fuses are in this box I recommend carrying backups of every fuse that's in here, including the 40 amps, because those are your main 12 volt fuses. Your breakers are just like at home. If they're halfway down their, their trip, you need to shut it off, turn it back on. They are all labeled. 
this is your battery disconnect. So this actually cuts the battery off from the house. You want to use this when you're storing, when you're not going to use it, so that your battery doesn't get drawn down and die when you come back to it. See this black panel? Uh-huh. You low do point have low drain. Low point drains. That drains all the water out of your coach. You drain your water tank, your hot water lines, and your cold water lines. Oh. Your water compartment right here. They give you a nice little picture description of everything so you won't forget. The flower is your tank flush. The little ugly one right here is your city water and your tank fill. Now that's determined by the valve. The valve is where it's at right now. That's going to fill your water tank. You guys live in Arizona. I'm assuming you're storing in Phoenix somewhere. Yeah. You will never have to winterize this. It doesn't get cold enough here. Never winterized a unit here in my life. Winterizing is only for storage or, or if winterizing, we were to go north? Well, it depends. If you're going to go store it up north where it is freezing, you're going to want to winterize. But if it's going to be stored here and you're going to be using it when you go to those colder climates, if you do, you'll be fine. As long as the water is moving and it's not sitting stagnant, it won't freeze. It shouldn't freeze. Turn it down. That is your city water. So city water is basically constant water and constant flow without having to turn on your water pump or worry about how much you have in your tank. So no water pump when you're on city water. Don't turn it on because it'll put too much pressure on it and it'll wear it out pretty quick. And so you can get the water pump either from the panel inside or from this little red guy here? You do have a water pump switch out here if you need it have an outside shower so I don't know why they put it on there but there. Yeah. This little switch right here, all it is is a light. The switch lights up and that's the light for out here. Case it's dark when you're hooking up. I don't I'm sure it's a lot brighter at night because the LEDs under the awning at night are really bright. Mm -hmm. And they put out pretty pretty good light. Any questions in here? Mm, no. When you get your new RV home, practice with the systems in your driveway or storage space. This will help lock the new info and procedures into your memory. Have your phone or video camera with you so you can review the walkthrough guide's demonstration if you forgot how something worked. Last, plan a shakedown trip to a nearby park or RV resort, or maybe even your backyard. Put your new RV through its paces and give yourself more practice while only a few miles from home. You might even want to have your camping partner bring his or her car along so that you can make those oops I forgot it trips back to Walmart or back to your home. I'll talk more about that shakedown trip idea in another video. If you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up icon in the video description and consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Happy camping!